I'm Charlotte Grimshaw. Um, I'm going to read a passage from my novel Soon. It's a contemporary New Zealand novel. It's about a man who becomes friends with the Prime Minister of New Zealand, but uh, he has a secret that threatens everyone around him, including the Prime Minister. He turned onto the Rotokauri Road, winding up into the hills, near the summit where the land fell away from the highway in steep slopes. He pulled over, walked up and down the edge of the road, looking into the dark bush, listening. He saw his reflection in the side of the car, tall and thin and curved. The wind sighed in the tops. A native pigeon landed on a branch and looked pompously down at him. Taking Mariana's phone, he threw it so hard he hurt himself. Instead of soaring away into the valley, it hit a tree, rebounded and disappeared too close to the road. He couldn't even get a simple thing like that right. The pigeon cocked its head, watching him as he stooped on the roadside, straightening his elbow with elaborate care. Crime was a young man's game. It was killing him. He leaned against the car, feeling the warmth of the metal against his sore leg and his strained elbow. He heard Weeks's voice. Do you miss her? Feel guilty. He raised his eyes, and there was the pigeon, stupid, astonished, preening its white bib. Should he throw his phone and Weeks's coffee cups down there too, or find another spot? Was it better to spread the evidence, or would that make it easier to find? A little stab of self-pity, he was so beleaguered and alone, so inexperienced. He needed support, information, peer review, the little gnome in his head blackly laughing. He needed the hushed silence of his office and a textbook that would tell him Disposal of incriminating evidence, international best practice. Pressing his fingers to his eyes, he saw red sunlight, sunrise against his lids. Then he straightened, fighting the urge to turn, run, high, he said. The man coming towards him was big and broad, with a satanic little goatee beard. All right, mate? Yes, fine, thanks. Not broken down? How had he arrived without any noise? It was unbelievable. Simon looked for the milk float or silent Prius, but saw only an ordinary red Holden Omega. Its driver's door open and the still shape of a woman vigilant in the passenger seat. But the athletic build, the Holden, the official tone, that Westy brute's goatee, a cop, he thought. He twitched the bag on his shoulder. I'm just on the phone, getting fresh air. His tongue was frozen, it was like talking through porridge. The man was already turning away, making a signal to his passenger. But thanks for asking, Simon called after him. The man turned, actually looked at him, considered, seemed about to ask another question, but only said, no worries. The red Omega pulled away, Simon raising his hand. Leaning back against the car, his arm to his face, he had a moment of bitter incredulity. A cough, possible cough. Even if not a cop, a witness, in fact two witnesses, who had seen him in this spot, who would remember later if questions were asked. They would search the bush beneath the road, find the phone. He was already plunging down the slope, his feet sinking into the soft piles of rotten vegetation, looking for the tree the phone had hit. Everything looked different below the bush canopy and he was soon disorientated. The bush smelled of tea and spices, a rich brown reek. The air was cool near the ground. He skidded, landing on his rump in a pile of rotten knee-cow fronds, their fibrous dust rising around him. He lay on his back for a moment, gazing at the sky. Against the blue, the manuka trunks were black, covered in furry fungus. A wetter, its feelers waving, scrambled over the top of a dislodged palm frond. So close he could see its shiny black eyes. He flinched away. A car droned by on the road above. After an age of searching, he slumped down on the soft ground and his eye fell on something metallic inside a pile of manuka twigs. The phone had landed in the centre of a network of spiderwebs, strung among dead leaves and fallen branches. He stuck his hand into the sticky membrane and extracted the phone, tearing the webs away with it. It was a long way back up to the road. He fought through a patch of toy toy and cutty grass that he hadn't passed on the way down and tore his shirt on a tree branch. When he reached the road, his mouth dropped, he could have sunk to his knees. 
the car was gone. He set off walking one way, changed direction, dithered, rounded the next bend and found it parked exactly where he left it. He should have realised in the bush, sense of direction is the first thing to go.